It says I'm live. <laughs> Hi there and welcome to this day in history for August 14th. Every once in a while this happens. Technical difficulties with editing. So we're going live today. We don't get pictures with live because I don't know how to do that. But we do get this day in history. So strap on your imagination and let's go. I was going to do this outside with my smartphone, but I didn't have enough battery. So here we are in the office without a green screen. And I'm um, hoping that I'm not making too much noise. Let me get my papers out. I printed it out, you see. Here's a coffee cup with a blueprint of the Dalek. All right, let's set this right aside over here. Okay. Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for August 14th. August 14th is the 226th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 227th in leap years, with 139 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is colophon, and I have an example, maybe. Do I? Did you really not get one? Oh, for crying out loud. All right, never mind about that then. Today's word is colophon. <laughs> Colophon is a noun that means a publisher's logo or imprint, particularly one that appears on a book's spine or title page. Colophons were especially common in the 15th and 16th centuries and served to provide the title or subject of the work, the author, the name of the printer or publisher, the date, location of publication. It can also be the logo or imprint on the back of a greeting card. Com colophon comes to us from Greek, a word that means summit or finishing touch. Turn our page over. First documented use of the word colophon is in the 1600s. And with that, we're going to start on August 14th in the year 1040 when King Duncan the first was killed in battle against his first cousin and rival, Macbeth. Macbeth then succeeded Duncan as king of Scotland. And I don't know why I was surprised to learn that Macbeth was a real person. You know, there's, there's a whole Shakespeare play about Macbeth. Anyway, there you go, Macbeth. On August 14th, 1457, this is the date of publication of the first book to feature the printed date of publication and a printed colophon. That book was a book of Psalms, the Mains Psalter, which was also the second major book printed with movable type in the West, the first being the Gutenberg Bible. This is the birthday of Italian mathematician and physicist this is the birthday of Italian mathematician and physicist Giambattista Benedetti, born August 14, 1530. Great day for birthdays, by the way. Lots of birthdays. We don't cover even half of them, but we're going to talk about a few of them. Giambattista Benedetti was interested in physics, mechanics, the construction of sundials, and the science of music. It's thought that Galileo derived his initial theory of the speed of a freely falling body from his reading of Benedetti's works. Giambattista Benedetti lived to the age of 59. The Oregon Territory was organized by an act of Congress on August 14, 1848. This is the birthday of American dentist and gambler, Doc Holliday, born August 14, 1851. He was a close friend and associate of lawman Wyatt Earp and is probably notable in history because of his role in the events leading up to and following the gunfight at the OK Corral. 
Unfortunately, Doc developed a case of tuberculosis, and they didn't really have any effective treatment for it back then. So he self-medicated with booze and drugs. Ultimately, it was the tuberculosis that killed him at the tender age of 36. On August 14, 1880, the construction of the Cologne Cathedral in Cologne, Germany was completed. It is the most famous landmark there. Great big pretty thing. An audio recording of English composer Arthur Sullivan's The Lost Chord was one of the first recordings of music ever made. It was played during a press conference on August 14, 1888, introducing Thomas Edison's phonograph in London, England. France became the first country to introduce motor vehicle registration on August 14, 1893. Oh, boy. This is the history, or this, <laughs> this is what happens in lives. <laughs> this is the birthday of American physicist and academic Frank Oppenheimer, born August 14, 1912. And if that name seems familiar to you, his big brother, J. Robert Oppenheimer, was also a physicist. Frank was a particle physicist. Oh, for crying out loud, now the... This has got a low battery, too. All right, hold on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> At least it gives you a warning when it's about to shut off. <laughs> All right, where were we? Oppenheimer. Frank was a particle physicist and had something to do with the development of uranium enrichment. He lived to the age of 72. On August 14, 1916, Romania declared war on Austria-Hungary. On August 14, 1935, Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act, creating a government pension system for the retired. The last known public execution in the United States took place on August 14, 1936 in Owensboro, Kentucky. This is the birthday of American singer, songwriter, and guitarist David Crosby, born August 14, 1941. He is, of course, the founding member of the group uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and also the Birds. On August 14, 1945, Japan accepted the Allied Terms of Surrender of World War II. And oh my goodness, this is the birthday of American actor, comedian, author, musician, producer, and screenwriter Steve Martin, born August 14th, 1945. He was born right here in Texas, down in Waco. Funny, funny guy. Happy birthday, Steve Martin. This is the birthday of Dan Danielle Steele. This is the birthday of Danielle Steele, born August 14th, 1947. She's best known for her romance novels. All right, let's see here. Three, four, five. This is the birthday of American cartoonist Gary Larson, born August 14th, 1950. He's the creator of the Far Side cartoons, and that's some funny stuff, too. This is the birthday of American basketball player and coach Magic Johnson, born August 14, 1959. There was a wide-scale power blackout that affected the Northeast United States and Canada on August 4, 2003, 2003. I remember that one. I was working at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Had gone home for lunch when the lights went out. 21 power plants had shut down within just a few minutes. At the time, it was the world's second most widespread blackout in history. I don't know if this was the case with that one or not, but it might have been, it might have started with a squirrel and the transformer. <laughs> and, and then uh, the uh, backup systems got overloaded and one by one, there they go. Today's song is Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, number one on August 14th, 1982. Actually, as of the 14th, it was beginning week three of a six-week run in that number one spot. 
Eye of the Tiger was the theme song for the movie Rocky III and was actually released the day after the movie was. Sylvester Stallone had wanted Queen's Another One Bites the Dust to be the theme song for Rocky III, but Queen wouldn't go along with it. So instead, he asked for this one. Good choice, I'd say. Eye of the Tiger. Number one, August 14th, 1982. Link in the description, or there will be after the live. <laughs> I'll get that description assembled after the live. All righty. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I listen to this every day when I'm editing, but I don't quite have it memorized. Can you believe that? <clears throat> Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. That uh, I'll put that I'll put a link to that. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. And that description lives on YouTube. So for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page, which is called No Really. You can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Getter. All those links in that description. All righty. That's all I could think of. We'll see if we have any better luck editing today. If not, we might be live again tomorrow. It's kind of fun. I actually enjoy doing this, but uh, it takes a different kind of preparation. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Now we look for the thank you very much button, and thank you very much. <laughs>